Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Or the Republic of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Wait, I already said that. The two countries that share the island of Hispaniola, the most populous island and second largest island in the West Indies. What are the West Indies? Well, all these islands in or near the Caribbean, or Caribbean Sea for real. Because that Christopher Columbus dude, who was the first European to lead a voyage to the islands, thought he was near India when he first explored them, other Europeans began to call them the, quote, West Indies to distinguish the islands from India. Anyway, Haiti is located on the western part of Hispaniola, and the Dominican Republic is located on the eastern part of it. This 242 mile border separates the two countries. Seen from space, this border is quite dramatic. On the Haitian side, you can see massive deforestation. On the Dominican side, forests remain. More on why that is in a bit. While both countries have a lot in common, today a lot of people tend to focus on their many differences. So let's start there. Before we do that, though, this video is sponsored in part by My Heritage. My Heritage. My Heritage is a leading global family history and DNA service that makes exploring your family history easier than ever. First, you activate your kit online. Then you swab your cheeks like I'm doing right now. Oh, I'm pretty good at this. I gotta say, it was pretty easy. Goes in the vial. Ooh, bubble. Break it off. Close it up. Put it in the biohazard bag because Mr. Beat is biohazardous. Then I shall place the biohazardous materials into the envelope to ship to my heritage. Seal the envelope. I'm going to mail this envelope. And now I get to wait three to four weeks for my results. Okay, I got the email with the results. Let's check this out. View DNA results. <gasps> Let's go! Matthew, you are. English. Italiano. Greek and South Italian. Finnish. Balkans. Wow, this is uh, exciting. So it looks like it breaks it down even further here. Oh, and then it traces my ancestors even in the United States here. As an added bonus, you can start a 30-day free trial of my heritage's best subscription for family history research and enjoy a 50% discount if you decide to continue it. Thanks to my heritage for sponsoring this video. Okay, so how are the Dominican Republic and Haiti different? The most glaring difference is that the Dominican Republic is generally much more prosperous than Haiti. Its economy is much larger than Haiti's and its GDP per capita is more than four times that of Haiti. And it has one of the fastest growing economies in the world right now. While both countries have developing economies, Haiti's poverty rate is more than triple that of the Dominican Republic's poverty rate. Indeed, by most measures, it's the poorest country in the entire Western Hemisphere. The Dominican Republic has been much more successful in attracting foreign investment and developing its tourism industry, which explains a lot of this. Another thing that explains the economic differences in the two countries is the political stability in each. Haiti, uh, has not been a politically stable place in recent years. Heck, it's rarely ever been stable. It's seen lots of political violence, frequent changes in leadership, and a history of coups and rebellions. The Dominican Republic, on the other hand, has had a much more stable political system and has been able to maintain a relatively peaceful and democratic government. This should be an entirely separate video. It should? Huh? There needs to be a separate video about why Haiti is so much poorer than the Dominican Republic. But that would require a separate video. And Hoser, you know how I feel about separate videos. You know what? I'm just gonna go make one. I'm just gonna go make a video explaining why Haiti became so much poorer than the Dominican Republic, and you're gonna have to deal with it. Fine, do it. Fine, I will. Go on, do it, Hoser. I am already. Do it, Hoser. Oh, I'm doing it. All right then. We'll check on his progress at the end of this video. 
Anyway, the unemployment rate is higher in Haiti, which is why so many Haitians illegally cross the border to work in the Dominican Republic. Related to those economic differences, Haiti has a much lower life expectancy. The Dominican Republic is nearly twice as big as Haiti, taking up about two-thirds of the island of Hispaniola. That said, due to its unique shape, Haiti has more coastline. The Dominican Republic is more urbanized. Still, Haiti is almost twice as densely populated. As I implied earlier, the Dominican Republic is way more forested. Deforestation has historically been pretty bad in Haiti, as many Haitians have chopped down a bunch of trees, mostly for charcoal for energy production. In 1923, 60% of Haiti's land was forest. By 2006, it was less than 2%. Fortunately, in recent years, there have been major efforts there to plant a bunch of trees. The Dominican Republic has more climate and landscape variation. In fact, it has both the highest and lowest elevations in all of the West Indies. The official language of the Dominican Republic is Spanish, while the official languages of Haiti are French and Haitian Creole. More on why that is in a bit. The Dominican Republic is more ethnically diverse, even though most residents there can trace their ancestry back to Spain. Most of its population today can trace their ancestry to many different ethnic groups. Most Haitians, on the other hand, trace their ancestry to Africa. More on why that is in a bit. The Dominican Republic has a much higher literacy rate. Haitians tend to be more religious. Haiti even has a distinct religion there, unique to the country, called Haitian voodoo. It developed as a combination of several West and Central African religions and Roman Catholicism. If you want to learn about this unique religion, the channel Religion for Breakfast made a great video about it. Haiti is currently in the process of transitioning to a system of universal health care. The Dominican Republic's health care system is partially universal. The government provides essential services to every citizen there, but to get better services, you often have to supplement that. The Dominican Republic has better cell phone service and higher internet speeds, and really just way more people connected to the outside world. While pretty much everyone has access to electricity in the Dominican Republic, less than half of Haitians do. The Dominican Republic public has twice as many roads and more than twice as many airports. Major industries in the Dominican Republic include cement, mining, and tourism. In fact, more tourists visit the Dominican Republic than all other Caribbean countries. Major industries in Haiti all tend to revolve around agriculture and include sugar refining, flour milling, and textiles. The traditional dance of Haiti is Yan Valu, inspired by the movement of snakes. Ah, but the Dominican Republic has merengue, baby. While Haiti is known for compa music, the Dominican Republic has bachata. Baseball is the most popular sport in the Dominican Republic, and the country is a well-known exporter of really good baseball players, okay? In fact, more than 11% of Major League Baseball players are from the Dominican Republic, the only country that has more representation in Major League Baseball is the United States. Soccer, or, um, I'm sorry, football, is the most popular sport in Haiti. Haiti is known for its griot, a fried pork dish, and the Dominican Republic is known for a type of stew called sancocho. The minimum age to drink alcohol in Haiti is 16, and the DR, it's 18. Okay, so for the rest of this video, we're only looking at what the Dominican Republic and Haiti have in common. Both have a similar population. Haiti has just about 400,000 more people. Both are growing at a similar rate. I mentioned earlier that Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Well, both of these countries are actually among the poorest in the Western Hemisphere, and millions of residents in both often suffer from malnourishment. Related to this, unfortunately, both countries have high crime compared to other countries in the Western Hemisphere. 
here. Residents of both countries are young. Yep, both have a low median age compared to most of the world. Both have similar tropical climates with variations that depend on altitude. Much of both countries is made up of straight up rainforests, yo. But portions of both Eastern Haiti and Western Dominican Republic are semi-arid. Overall, both countries get plenty of precipitation with rainy seasons and dry seasons. It's generally always warm or hot in both. Although it's much cooler in the mountains, which occasionally even leads to snow in parts of the DR, the main thing that most people don't realize about both countries, though, is just how varied the temperatures and rainfall is within both countries. It's kind of crazy. Both are vulnerable to tropical storms and hurricanes that often hit the entire island between the months of August and October each year. Both can also get severe earthquakes. Recently, Haiti has had worse luck with earthquakes, though. In 2021, a devastating earthquake there killed tens of thousands of Haitians and caused hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. This happened just 11 years after another devastating earthquake there killed hundreds of thousands of Haitians and caused billions of dollars in damage. Dozens of small islands off the coast are officially part of both countries. Both have lots of mountains and valleys. The biggest cities in both countries, Port-au-Prince and Haiti and Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic are also the capital cities in both and they dominate the rest of the country. That said, Santo Domingo is almost twice as big as Port-au-Prince and uh, a much safer place to visit. Both used to be European colonies. Yeah, let's get into some history for real. Humans have lived on the island for at least 1400 years, probably longer. Around the year 600, a group of Arawak migrants, today known as the Taino, arrived on the island. The first European to the island was a dude you've probably heard of, Christopher Columbus. He's the one who called it La Isla Española, which translates to, quote, the Spanish island. Eventually, they shortened it to Hispaniola. Anyway, Columbus got there on his first voyage in 1492, establishing a settlement called La Navidad, located on the northern coast of modern-day Haiti. So, yeah, the first European settlers were Spanish. While the local Taino population and the Spanish got along at first, the Taino's egalitarian social system definitely conflicted with the feudal system of the Spanish. Soon, they didn't trust each other, and by the time Columbus returned in 1493, La Navidad had been destroyed and all 39 settlers were dead. And so Columbus started a new settlement called La Isabella on the northern coast of modern day the Dominican Republic. Three years later, Columbus's brother, Bartholomew, started the aforementioned city of Santo Domingo. Yep, it's that freaking old. In fact, it's the oldest continuously inhabited European settlement in the Americas, baby. After that, more and more Spanish came to the island to settle and the Taino nearly disappeared. Not due to warfare, but due to disease. Most experts say that so many of the Taino died due to not having immunity to the European diseases the Spanish brought over. As many as 95% of the Taino population died within the first 100 years after the Spanish first arrived. Dang. The Spanish set up haciendas, or huge plantations, and mines for gold, often forcing the few remaining Taino to work for them. Because heaven forbid the rich Spanish dudes worked themselves. Because the Taino were dying off, the Spanish began importing new slaves from Africa in the early 1500s. Thousands of them. The first big slave revolt in the Americas happened in Santo Domingo on Christmas Day 1521 when members of the Wolof Nation led an uprising against Diego Columbus, the son of Christopher Columbus. In the following decades, more and more slaves escaped and formed communities in the mountains. Around that time, French pirates started regularly showing up to the island, and often the Spanish would clash with them. Many of the French pirates started becoming, uh, not pirates, since they just settled on the parts of the island the Spanish had not settled. By the end of the 1500s, the Spanish were mostly focused on exploiting national resources
resources elsewhere in the Americas, and Hispaniola became neglected. In the early 1600s, the Spanish government became frustrated that the Spanish settlements in Hispaniola were illegally trading with the Dutch. So they forced them to move to the southeastern part of the island. Most of the resettled ended up dying from starvation and disease, and many more slaves escaped in the process. After that, more French pirates and even some English pirates settled the island. The English tried to capture Santo Domingo, but uh, that didn't work out for them. For a big chunk of the 1600s, France and Spain were at war with each other. At one point, France was victorious enough against the Spanish to control all of Hispaniola. However, after the Peace of Ricewick, France and Spain agreed to split the island. On the western third of the island, the French officially established the colony of San Domain, or San Domingue. The eastern two-thirds of the island was Santo Domingo. Yeah, they were called the same thing, just in different languages. Throughout the 1700s, the French imported way more slaves to the island from Africa than the Spanish ever did, as many as nearly 800,000. In the late 1780s, a third of slaves on the entire Atlantic slave trade went to San Domingue. Interestingly, during this time, San Domingue, or modern-day Haiti, was way wealthier than Santo Domingo, or modern-day the Dominican Republic. Well, at least for a few wealthy landowners, anyway. The Dominican Republic had far less slaves and more intermarriage between Europeans, Africans, and the few remaining indigenous folks. It also slowly began to develop a market economy, unlike San Domingue. In 1791, slaves revolted against French colonial rule in San Domingue in what we now call the Haitian Revolution. It was the most successful slave revolt in history, and it led to the creation of Haiti as a country. The revolution was the only slave uprising in history that led to the founding of a country that was both free from slavery and ruled by former slaves. I won't go into the details of the Haitian Revolution in this video, but I highly recommend you check out my friend Will's video on the topic on his channel, Exploring History. Basically, it was a big freaking deal, and it arguably had a ripple effect that ultimately helped end slavery throughout all of the Americas. Many people don't know that the leader of the Haitian Revolution, the mysterious Toussaint Louverture, also tried to free all the slaves in Santo Domingo. But the French were able to prevent that from happening and held control over Santo Domingo for a few years. In 1809, Spain regained Santo Domingo as a colony. But in 1821, the residents there declared independence from Spain, calling themselves the Republic of Spanish Haiti. But that didn't last long because the Republic of Haiti annexed it the next year. When Haiti controlled the entire island, it was a tumultuous time filled with all kinds of uprisings and little political stability. Not only that, but during that time, the French demanded the Haitian government pay them in reparations for, quote, stealing their assets from them during the revolution. Haiti ultimately paid France around $30 billion in today's money. In 1844, the Dominican Republic declared independence from Haiti. But Haiti didn't just let them leave without a fight. The Dominicans fought for many years, only losing less than 20 soldiers, while Haiti lost thousands. The Dominican Republic's second independence was short-lived again, however, because the Spanish came back and made them a colony again. Finally, though, after the War of Restoration, the Dominican Republic became independent again and kicked the Spanish out for good in 1865. For the rest of the 1800s, political instability continued to be the norm in both Haiti and the Dominican Republic. From about 1915 to 1934, the United States occupied Haiti without their permission and basically controlled them. From about 1916 to 1924, it did the same thing to the Dominican Republic. The Haitians and Dominicans both hated this, of course, but the Dominicans fared better under American rule than the Haitians. While both countries have had versions of, quote, 
democracies ever since, there's been plenty of corruption in both governments, especially in Haiti. In 1937, the DR's brutal dictator, Rafael Trujillo, and his security forces were responsible for the massacre of as many as 30,000 Haitians. Even today, this event continues to hurt relations between the two countries. In the 1980s, both countries still struggled tremendously compared to most of the Western Hemisphere. However, since then, the Dominican Republic has been more politically stable and, therefore, more economically prosperous. Today, the legacy of hundreds of years of colonial rule is still everywhere in both countries. The biggest religion in both today is Christianity, specifically Roman Catholicism, but there are also millions in both who identify as Protestant. Surprisingly, both have a similar cost of living, although when I researched for this video, I kept getting conflicting reports. Some websites say the Dominican Republic has a higher cost of living, which makes sense to me given its superior economy. Other sites say Haiti has a higher cost of living. Say what? Let me know down in the comments about what that's all about. Both share a highway. Well, kind of. Route 45, or DR 45, is a 154 kilometer long Dominican Republic highway, as the name implies, and a part of it runs parallel to the Haitian border, which is a cool way to see both countries at once. Speaking of that border, it's actually quite difficult to cross back and forth between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. There are only four main roads that cross between the two, and when you go to one of these four main roads, you'll just mainly see Haitians trying to cross into the Dominican Republic. And this shouldn't surprise you. Unless you haven't been paying attention this whole time, Dan. Anyway, around half a million Haitians currently live in the Dominican Republic. However, not all of them are documented. Dominican Republic authorities deport between 100,000 and 200,000 Haitians each year, often fueled by xenophobia. Sometimes they accidentally deport people to Haiti who, quote, look Haitian, but have actually lived in the DR their entire lives. In response to so many Haitians illegally crossing the border into the Dominican Republic in recent years, it's been building a 164-kilometer border wall to keep them out. As an American, that sounds familiar. Unfortunately, as long as Haiti keeps having such bad luck, both with its economy and natural disasters, we will likely continue to see Hispaniola divided. Most experts admit that countries are better off when they are strongly connected to each other, and perhaps one day residents of the entire island will realize they have way more in common than differences. So, Hoser, did you get it done? Yeah, it's done already. I just posted it on my channel. Awesome. So, yeah, don't be a Hoser, eh? Head over to Hoser's channel to check out his new video about why the Dominican Republic is so much wealthier than Haiti. And while you're over there, subscribe, because his channel is tubular. I love it. And which two countries should I compare next for this series? Let me know down below. Not above, but below. Imagine if... The comments were above these videos.